Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jun Wei Song, and this is Kun Yu Chen. Today, our topic is click, click, boom, bumps over our mind. In this talk, we will share our adventure while conducting a cybersecurity research. You guys ready? Let's get started. All right, so my name is Jun Wei Song. I'm a Python developer and a malware hunter. And this is Kun Yu Chen. He is a security researcher and a C Python contributor. All right, so now let's look at the outline. The first two parts we will show you how we start the adventure. And then we will give you the brief introduction of the zip bomb. And number three, uh, we will tell you why. Why do we want to create a PyP packager mitigating the zip bomb? And number four, uh, we will share our experience of requesting a CVE number. And number five, uh, we will also tell you why do we want to patch the C Python module and our discussion with a core developer on BPO. And this topic will be introduced by Kun Yu Chen. This is the most exciting part. All right, so number one, let me tell you how the adventure started. As I mentioned earlier, we are cybersecurity researchers, so we want to develop a malware analysis engine. And our goal is to join VirusTotal. So we send an email to VirusTotal to ask for a criteria to join them. They respond, and they say, the first thing we should combat is the zip bomb problem. We took a challenge, and here we go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about a zip bomb. By definition, zip bomb is a file, and it is designed to crash the program where system reading is. And as you can see here, this is, this is an equation of calculating the compression ratio. The numerator which is uncompressed size, will be divided by the denominator, which is compressed size. And then you can get a compression ratio. And according to our experience, if this number is greater than 100, it is highly suggested as a zip bomb. All right, so let's look at the real case. The uncompressed content which is 1.1 gigabyte. And the compressed one is 1,000K. So let's do a little bit calculation. The compression ratio here is 1,000. In other words, this is a zip bomb. And by the way, if you want to know how to make a zip bomb, please check the appendix for more information. All right, so since our goal is to mitigate the zip bomb problem, so we did a lot of research on the internet, but no Python package for zip bomb mitigation were found. So based on Kara Marie's work, we developed some mitigations. And since we have limited time, please find them in the appendix for more information. But wait a minute. Since we cannot find similar mitigation package for Python, how about we create one and upload it to PyP? All right, so we based on Kara Marie's work, we create a package called SunZip, uh, Secure Unzip. And you can install it through typing PIP in store S-U-N-Z-I-P. But wait a minute. What if C Python zip file module already has this feature built in? So we decide to give it a shot. We write a very, very simple script to test whether the zip file module 
has this protection built in or not? And the answer is obvious. No, it does not. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Does that mean we just found a vulnerability in C Python? Whoa, this is huge, man. All right, so let me share our experience of requesting the CVE number. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure. It is a list containing an identification number and a description for public known cybersecurity vulnerabilities. So we just fill in the form and submit our CVE request to the authority. A few days later, we got a reply from the authority. And they issued us a CVE number, which is 2019-9674. And the suggest description here is lib slash zip file dot py in Python through 3.7.2 allows uh, remote attackers to cause a denial of service via a zip bomb. But wait a minute. How about we directly implement the zip bomb prevention in C Python zip file module? So we did it. With the mitigation we have discussed before, we focus on the zip file.py. So we want to patch our mitigations into this. So after a few days, we have this patch down. So we decide to send this patch back to the CPython community. And before that, there are some steps you need to know. First, uh, you need to address the issue on BPO. Second, you need to discuss your issue and then propose solutions with the core developers. And number three, send your patch uh, through the GitHub Pro request. And number four, once the consensus will reach, the pull request will be merged. All right, so next part, I will hand over to Kun Yuxuan. He will introduce the most exciting part, which is the discussion with the core developer on BPO. Uh, <laughs> 안녕하세요. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kun Yu Chen, and me and Jun Wei, we come from Taiwan, and we had a lot of fun here, and I'm going to continue the presentation. All right, so uh, as Jun Wei uh, discussed uh, earlier, he said that we, uh, we, fin we, we, we write a patch for a C Python zip file module, and we think it is good to send a patch back to the C Python community. So, we directly went to BPO, BPO, bugs.python.org. This is a platform that everyone can report issues, and you can see every, you can, and you can see that you can inter, uh, directly interact with the core developers on this platform. So we went, we went there to discuss our issues and our proposed solutions. All right, so we launched our first round discussion. This time we have three things prepared. Number one, we provide the details of CVE. And number two, we provide the proposed solutions. And number three, we raise the question about compression ratio threshold. Wow, not long after we got our first reply from the core developer, Sir He. And he has two points to respond. Number one, he said, the library should not limit the compression ratio. Well, we can understand this because uh, if, you, if we build in this technique in the CPython module, then because CPython, Python, 
is an open source software, everyone can read the source code, then it would be very easy for hackers to bypass this technique. And number two, he said, you should make a decision what zip file should be rejected. In other words, he means that it's the user's responsibility, not the C Python module's responsibility, to verify the data. And we also got a reply from a second core developer, Christian. And he's in the Python security team. And he has three points to respond. Number one, he said, a low-level module should not limit extraction by default. We can understand this because it's just like a butterfly effect. A small change in the low-level module would probably cause a huge damage in a high-level application. And number two, he said, we can improve the documentation. Well, it's good because we can write some uh, 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 warnings and pitfalls about using uh, zip file modules, and we can also teach users how to uh, uh, prevent uh, uh, disasters from uh, using zip file modules. And number three, he said, we can implement some method that simplifies the detection of zip bomb attacks. For instance, you can write some methods that returns information such as count of files, compressed size, and the uncompressed size. And the users can use this information and with the document we provide to, uh, to judge on their own. But, so we can say that <laughs> our first round discussion with the core developer, well, we got rejected. But we never give up. So we launched our second round discussion. This time we got two things prepared. So number one, we improved the documentation with appropriate warnings and solutions. Number two, we implement, we implement methods in zip file with questions, suggestion. Yeah, we got a reply. Here, sir, he again. Okay, he said he is against, you see, against. He is against such trivial methods in zip file because its interface is already complicated. And number two, he said, as for the documentation change, it could be useful to add more general notes about possible pitfalls. In other words, he disagrees with the method implementation and he agrees with the document improvements. All right, so we also got a reply from Christian again. This time he said that the correct approach is to always verify all data from untrusted sources. It's the 101 of, the, of application security. Well, if you can read this carefully, his idea is basically the same as Sir He's idea in our first round discussion. All right, so we can say that, unfortunately, our second round discussion with the core developer got rejected. But we never give up. So we launched our third round discussion. And this time we know our consensus with the core developers were improving the zip file documentation. So we listed compression pitfalls according to Sir He's suggestion and add some of our ideas in it. And after we done for the patch uh, for the documentation, we then send a pull request directly back to the C Python repository on GitHub. Not long after, we got our reply, or we can say we got an approval from the author of famous Python package, Salary. His ID is AUVIPY. And not long after, we also got another reply, or you can say another re approval from core developer CSA Bella, and she also helped us to request a review from Christian and Sir He. And we have another good news. Victor Stinner, fourth, number four, core developer interacted with us. Number one, Sir He. Number two, Christian. Number three, C.S. Abella. And number four, Victor Stinner. 
he has uh, maintained a website that documented uh, security, all security issues in Python. And our zip, file, uh, zip bomb issue is collected in this website. So if you visit this website, you can see the message right in, in the middle of, the, uh, uh, of this screen. All right, so we can say that uh, our third round discussion with the core developers got partially, partially accepted. But since we know that core developers are very busy, as you, as you can see, uh, uh, Carol Willing, the keynote in, the, uh, in this morning, she said that she's the core developers of three important projects. This is demanding. So we know that we're still, we know that they are very busy and we're still waiting for their final approval. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we can summarize all these finding, interesting things, technique, security issues, and share it to PyCon Korea? <laughs> well, thanks for having us right here. We had a lot of fun, okay? Yeah, give us a pause, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, actually we have something we really want to share. We have three things that we really want to share. First, you have to be bold. For instance, if you really want something to happen, sometimes all you have to do is just ask for it. For example, we directly send the application to the authority of CVE. We directly launched our discussion with the Python core developers on BPO. And we directly send our pull request back to the CPython repository on GitHub. Number two, you have to be persistent because good results are there for persistence guy. And number three, which is the most important one. You have to have fun. Please, ask yourself one question. If I'm not having fun, why am I doing this? The ultimate goal is to have fun. All right, so please remind yourself this thing. Have fun, okay? So we had a lot of fun here. All right, despite we had a lot of fun, actually we made a mistake. Guys, this is really important here. Please look at here. All right, so next time, if you find a security issue in C5, hi, Carol. Hi. <laughs> All right, so next time, if you find a security issue or, or a vulnerability in CPython, please mail it directly to security at python.org. Do not post it on BPO directly because BPO is a public platform that everyone can read. And you don't know what the hackers would do with the information you provide. And this is the end of our presentation. Thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, thank you for the amazing talk. Uh, Jun Wei Song and Yun Yu Chen. Uh, and we will have a few Q&A from now on. Uh, please come to the mic if you have a question. Page 22. Here? Yeah, thank you. And what I want to know is, I'm a newbie on the cybersecurity. How can the remote attackers can cause a denial of the service? Actually, uh, okay. Actually, we don't know how the remote attacker do this. We just simply write a script using zip file module and to extract a zip file, a zip bomb. And it just happened. So we did not study how remote attackers caused this attack. Okay. And first of all, the one more question is, could you explain about your details of the project? 
detail of what? Which page? Project. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, so our first round and second round discussion with uh, core developers, uh, Sarhi and Christian, uh, they have both uh, same idea: is that we should not touch the low-level module because uh, it's just like a butterfly effect, just as I mentioned earlier. A small change in a low-level module would probably cause a great disaster. And sometimes if we, if we build some techniques, for, in, for instance, uh, we're building the thresholds to measure whether it is the zip bomb or not, and it would be easy for hackers to bypass this technique because he can read the source code. So uh, he think they they think that the the best idea is to write uh, the pitfalls and warnings and some uh, maybe uh, tech methods to teach the users to pr to prevent this thing from happens in the documentation. So users can use the information to build their own technique. Yeah. So uh, what we what, why we got rejected because we directly built in a, a threshold method in. Yeah, and the second round we we did implement some methods that in, that returns information such as um, such as this. But sir, he sir he does, doesn't like it because he thinks the interface in the zip file module is already complicated. So he doesn't want want this trivial methods to be built in. Thank you.